May 6th, 12 o'clock. Can we uh, please stand with us and uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In a motion about to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion made second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, roll call. Yeah, we should have roll call, Beth. <laughs> Make sure they're all here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thanks. You can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome everyone in the uh, chamber uh, this afternoon. And Bennett from the uh, Mars Daily Sentinel, especially you people that are watching over television, uh, wherever you may be. First thing on the agenda is our general discussion. And uh, if anybody has any uh, concerns, uh, complaints, or things to say about the city that's good, we ask them to stand up to the podium and uh, state your name and address. And uh, the council cannot act on it today, but they're always willing to listen to your concerns. Do we have any? Jake, you bet. My name is Jay Faber. I want to thank you for inviting me here to speak. I'd like to address your tree ordinance. I have a large maple tree in the right of way, a nuisance that I inherited when I bought my home in 2005 on Central Avenue. The shallow roots from the tree have grown under my sidewalk and have lifted five sections, which is 15 feet. I'm going to replace the sidewalk soon, but the cause of the problem persists. Trees do cause a lot of damage to sidewalks. It's a public hazard, a safety hazard, and a negligence liability for the city and property owners. I don't want anyone to be injured in a trip and fall incident and sue both the city of Lamars and I for an ongoing problem that can be avoided. More and more people are walking now, especially in evenings with the nice weather, so the safety of pedestrians has to be considered. <coughs> Typically, when a repair is needed, damaged concrete is removed, the roots are pruned, and new concrete is poured and finished. Although in my case, the extent of the necessary pruning will be so severe, going down several feet, that the health and safety of the tree will be compromised. The tree will have to be removed eventually. It may even weaken and die and fall into the street, and therefore it's a potential hazard. The tree is causing danger and a future liability, so I am respectfully asking that the city again remove the tree and prevent a future problem. This will also give the city crew workers open access to the utilities that are underground. I can then put in a safe sidewalk for school children and others. That problem can be avoided <coughs> once and for all. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else? If not, uh, we'll move on to thumbs up award, John. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, Clark? Nothing. <coughs> Nothing. Rex? Pass, thank you. I've got just a couple. One is uh, I, I really feel that uh, these uh, we've got two excellent schools in our city here, Galen Catholic <coughs> and Lamar's uh, community. And I understand that uh, thumbs out award out to goes to uh, Galen Catholic uh, for the excellent uh, ball they had the other day, <coughs> a new record, and I think that's uh, that's great. The other one is uh, the uh, Lamar's uh, community uh, was uh, in a um, program with Jimmy Johnson Foundation, who's a race car driver, by the way. Um, Jimmy Johnson Foundation and uh, Wells Enterprises uh, put together a help of hope. Uh, or Helmet of Hope uh, program for uh, underprivileged children and um, uh, they ran a contest on it and, and, and Mars came down and was picked one of the five finalists which is going to be able to share a $25,000 or not share, they'll get a $25,000 award which I think great is, is as far as speaking about Lamar's and the people that got behind the votes and and especially Wells Enterprises, 
uh, for starting this Hope of Helmet program with Jimmy Johnson. So, thumbs up award to both of them. <clears throat> Consent items. All items listed under consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of those items unless a request is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. We've got eight, nine of them today on the, uh, on the consent item list. First one is the approval of the April 15, 2014 regular meeting minutes. The second one is a list of bills for the period ending 4-30-14. The third one is a liquor license out outdoor service for dingers. The fourth one is a request to close the street of Wells Enterprises Incorporated. The fifth one is a request to close the street of Rock Assembly uh, Church, uh, Rock Solid, excuse me, Assembly Church. The sixth one is a request to close the street for the Chamber of Commerce. The seventh one is a Floyd River Bank Stabilization Project. The eighth one is the Airport Manager Contract. And the ninth one is a budget amended hearing. <coughs> uh, at this time, does any of the council members have any questions? Quick question on the um, Rock Solid Assembly on that street north of the church. I just noticed a lot of activity at the elevator there right now, and they use that. And August may be far enough out that that's not an issue, but was that, um, were they notified? I, I know they've closed it in the past, but mm -hmm. it seems like people are holding corn and such a lot, you know, everything's coming in at different times than normal. Um, so on that one, I have no problem approving it, but I would just ask that uh, notice be given to the elevator there that that's the street that the trucks kind of circle around on. Yeah, yeah, we would still have to give notice. We okay. have not given notice thus far. Okay, so as long as that's done, yeah. okay. fine. Is there any other ones? Motion to approve consent items one through nine. Second. Second. Motion made been made and approve items section one through nine. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Uh, moving on to the action items. And, uh, the first one on the action items is uh, Public Works Building uh, Change of Orders. The contracts have been awarded for various aspects of our Public Works Building Project. Several meetings have been held with each of the awarded contractors. The construction manager, uh, Ryan Welchin, will present these changes available uh, by the time of the meeting, which I see Ryan is here today. Uh, the staff uh, re or administration recommends the council approval of the negotiated change orders. And you need to know where the financial impact is a source of funding for this project has been previously approved as Lamar's Urban Renewal or TIF revenue. Ryan, would you share with us the uh, changes? I know you've been working on them, you and Scott. And, um, thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, since our last meeting, we've done some value engineering of the project. Uh, to try to cut costs for items that we thought uh, we didn't quite need as bad as we thought we did. Um, so I'll just read off the list of the items and then we'll kind of review it as I go through the sheet. I apologize, I didn't give you the list of items we got in here to check the list and um, then I'll review it. Uh, item number one, we eliminated five overhead doors. Item number two, uh, we're going to install a steel wainscot on the back side of the building in lieu of the masonry. Uh, and just, just leave the masonry on the office area only. Uh, we're going to reduce the lineal feet of trench drain uh, in the interior of the building. Uh, we're going to change the 7 inch, we're going to go from 8 inch concrete to 7 inch concrete on the interior and the exterior. Uh, 7 inch is going to handle the load just fine, so we had 8 inch in there. Uh, we're going to eliminate some concrete retaining walls at the salt and cold storage. Uh, we're going to eliminate the concrete wall at the cold storage and do wood framing in lieu of that. And they're going to reduce the square foot of paving. Uh, so if you go to your paper, the item in pink uh, was your current contract from the last meeting uh, that was awarded. Uh, the items in yellow, uh, we have a value engineering savings of 173765 since our last meeting, uh, which leaves you uh, if you approve this with a new contract for your for your contractors of 1.4 million, one excuse me, 1,482,709. Uh, 
I'll just run through that list of where we made our savings. Um, if you look at building supplier, uh, he had an ad of 62,000. Uh, that's in lieu of the Wayne's coat mentioned before. Uh, the five overhead doors are now being framed in. The salt storage uh, was concrete walls, now is wood framing. Uh, so he, he had an ad uh, for his division of work. Uh, the concrete foundation, uh, which was the, we re-engineered the footings uh, due to CTS reports we did not have earlier. And the elimination of the concrete retaining walls, uh, we were able to save $91,882. Uh, the slab on grade, uh, we eliminated the trench drains and changed from 8-inch uh, concrete to 7-inch concrete for a, a deduct of 58824 which is a little bit misleading because we had to add back in the asphalt at the cold storage. Uh, the cold storage building had seven inch or eight inch concrete in it. Well, salt affects concrete, so in the design process, we decided to take out the concrete and replace with asphalt. And I do not have those numbers yet, so that is a little bit misleading. It won't be a full 58,000 because we have to replace with asphalt. Uh, I'm thinking probably around 20 to 30,000 savings actual. Uh, once those bids come back in. Um, and then the concrete paving, we reduce the square foot of concrete paving, um, and that is a $90,369 $369 savings. Um, if you go down the list to the left there, you'll see some estimated savings, um, items that have not been reflected yet because we haven't set them out for bids. Um, currently, we're working through bids for overhead doors and sprinkler system. Uh, overhead doors, uh, beans we're eliminating five doors, we expect a savings of 20000 in that area. Uh, the rough face block at the exterior, we have not bid out yet, but we're expecting about $15,000 in savings uh, as it moves forward. And the rebar, I currently have another bid for $15,000 cheaper uh, than the $60,000 bid, so right off the bat we're $15,000 ahead. And then after the value engineering, I expect that'll be even better. Uh, so if you award these items, these new contracts amount are to the left there. Uh, I think we're headed in the right direction, but uh, I don't see too many savings or value engineering past this point. So this is the, the, the largest part of your savings right here today. Certified Any questions? Testing, certified testing come in better than we thought or worse there, than we thought? The better. actual earthwork tests were better than we thought. Uh, if you're talking cost, I didn't see any cost in regards to that. No, I, I meant as far as the actual test. The test came in better than we thought. And what's yes. your lineal foot um, trench um, drains that you're talking about? Um, I don't have the actual lineal foot on hand, but they are varied um, room by room. I think we average about 20 to 30 foot per room, and we changed that to 10. And Steve is good with the reductions? Yes, yes. And actually, it was kind of a... The trench drains were laid out um, by Steve and some of the city, uh, but to make the actual building function properly, they were too long. Uh, we want our doors and elevations to be at a, at a constant grade. In order to do that, they needed to be shrunk down anyway. Uh, so between Steve and myself, yes, this is definitely the better way to go. Okay, then the, my last one is salt storage. You guys changed the design. Is that good for longevity? I'm, I'm big on longevity, so. The only reason uh, we started out the bidding process, we had eight foot concrete walls around the entire building, uh, which was basically for the salt storage, but we just continued around the um, cold storage just because we had the salt. It was, a, it was one big building lumped together. Okay. Well, there really wasn't a need for it to go all the way around. Okay. So basically your cold storage is now going to be just like your main building. So there is no structural integrity or nothing given up there. It's just so uh, being as it was a lump sum building, we just made all the footings and foundation the same, which we didn't really need to. And the, the half of that building that is going to be used for salt, the integrity of that is identical to what was originally bid. Yes. We didn't change that portion of it. Um, we changed the cold storage portion that is not going to receive salt. Okay. Um, the only other change we made, and Ryan alluded to it, is we took the Portland cement concrete out and you know what salt does to Portland cement. So, and we substituted a floor that is asphalt. But you still have concrete walls around it. Is that an issue? Uh, it is, uh, absolutely. And so there would be a mastic that would be put on that Portland cement. Is that concrete. that 5,000 uh, yes. coatings? Yes. Okay. You're correct. 
And this won't affect the operating efficiency of the facility or the, the crews that are Nope, this on. was worked through with the building committee, Scott, Steve, Brad, uh, all of us were involved in that. And then the last one for me is um, the facade. You, you, you're leaving off, you took off the south side, right? Yes. It would you, be the, the, the non-street facing side. The south correct, side. correct. You, and we're now just bricking the office area? The office area, the... Uh, the 80-foot side and the 50-foot side, I'm not sure my direction's right offhand, but the 80-foot side and the 50-foot side will have a brick veneer, uh, adhered brick veneer instead of the masonry, typical masonry, which will allow us to shrink our footings from a 12-inch footing to a, to a uh, trench footing of 14-inch with a 10-inch block wall. So we're able to save on concrete. Okay. Good work, fine and safe. Any other questions? Yeah, since he's at the microphone, when are we going to start and when is it going to be done? <laughs> I should, uh, always, always a famous question. Um, right now, Scott and I are working through, since we got these finalized drawings for footings and the finalized numbers, uh, we really couldn't move forward with the rebar. Uh, that's why he's holding up. We really couldn't move forward on the rebar order right. until everything was in place, right. and that is today. Okay. So once that gets into place, I will finalize a uh, supplier for my rebar. I'm hoping to turn rebar around in three weeks before we before we actually start. So first of June, you'll probably start. That's what I'm hoping. First of December, you'll be done. I can't say a date until I meet. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. As soon as I get rebar shops, I honestly I will I'll put together a schedule. Just uh, trying to help you. That's <laughs> just a question. <laughs> Motion um, approving change orders as presented for public uh, works building contract. Second. second. Motion made and second approving the change orders as presented to the public works contracts. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I want to compliment uh, Ryan. I want to compliment Scott and, and anybody that's worked on this, the committee. Um, Good job. Normally when we have these, uh, they come in higher than lower, and we save $173,000. So, you so guys, far so good. You guys did a good job. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Okay, moving on to the next one is the... Um, Wells Enterprises request for billboards. Wells Enterprises Incorporated is requesting a placement of billboards at the four main entrances of Lamar's. The billboards will direct visitors to the location of the Blue Bunny Ice Cream Parlor. The billboards will be placed on private property. Section 152.11 uh, of the Lamar's Code of Ordinance states that billboards must be approved by the council. The billboards will range in size from three by six to five by ten. The section 152.11 requires council to conduct a public hearing on the placement and location of said billboards. Said billboards. Staff recommends setting May 20th as a date for the public hearing. Everybody in agreement to that? Motion established in May 20, 2014 at 12 p.m. for a public hearing on the placement and location of Blue Bunny ice cream parlor billboards. Second. Question, question? Question, yeah. Does, does the state get involved when these are out near the Plymouth or on the Highway 3? Uh, yes, if it's within the jurisdiction of one of their highways, yes. Okay. Uh, the primary thing that they look at is size, and it has to be in a uh, commercial district. So we can approve, but it still has to, the state has to also give an okay before it's done. Okay. We have two representatives here on this is three. <coughs> this isn't where we're putting our city of Lamar signs, or where we thought we were going to put them either, right? No. In none of these locations. Okay. No. So just here, I'm Leslie Bartholomew with Wells, um, and here to answer any questions that you may have today. I mean, the, our biggest issue is we're getting visitors here, and they want to see the parlor. They're having a hard time finding it. And that's a, that's a, a good thing that we have plenty of people coming and, and spending lots of their dollars in the community of Lamar. So we just want to help them find their way downtown, find their way to the parlor. Um, we're actually, we were selected to be one of the attractions in the Travel Iowa video this summer. So we know that's going to attract even more people um, downtown Lamar's. So definitely want to help them find their way to the parlor. So then Scott, do we, it, you know, we can issue an approval for these, but then does administration work with Wells to deal with DOT on <coughs> regulations and approvals from that level if they're ones that aren't on city only? The one, the one on Hawkeye, which is Business 75, that's 100% that's city. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it'd be the other three that they would have to get subsequent approval by the DOT. Okay. I assume you're working with Roxanne. Yes. Okay. And we're working with um, old school signs in order to put all of this together and make sure that we get the proper. Yeah. Okay. And then are these, these, there'd be a base that would have to be put up. These aren't existing billboards, correct? Correct. So you'll have to do the post or all of these. Yes, yes, we need okay. you all of that. All right. Okay. And when do you think you're going to put them up? We're hoping before ice cream days, when we have a lot of people oh in the boy. community. So. Okay. Good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs> tell us, tell the deal to you. That's <laughs> great. It's for all of us. Hey, we, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for you? Well, else? I'd entertain a motion. We already have it. Oh, that's right. We just ask questions after. Yeah. <laughs> Motion made and second. Establishing May 20th, 2014 at 12 p.m. for a public hearing on the placement of the location Blue Bunny ice cream parlor billboards. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks a lot. So I'll have a hearing, but they can still work on it in the interim. Yep. Okay, moving on. Lamar's Airport. Apron Taxiway Reconstruction Project. The city recently completed an informal selection process for engineering firms for the airport, 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 apron taxiway reconstruction project as required by FAA. Attached as follows, agreement for the professional services with Bolton and Mink Incorporated, and number two is the application for the federal assistance. The Public Works Committee has reviewed the engineering proposals and recommends Bolton and Mink. Scott, do you want to comment on this uh, a little bit? What yeah, um, it's kind of been a short few, so I apologize. That what got in the agenda is uh, before the negotiations with Bolton and Mink, and we do have Matt Freer here in the audience, so he can come to the podium as well. Um, but in negotiating with Matt and Bolton and Mink, uh, we've decided on a um, design fee of thirty thousand instead of the thirty-six thousand nine fifteen. So it brings the total engineering fees down to 38170 compared to the um, 45085 And plus, Matt and Bolton and Mink has agreed to do this on a um, hourly basis with a maximum not to exceed those figures. So I, uh, due to that, I would certainly recommend that you uh, um, contract with Bolton and Mink on this uh, professional services agreement. And the committee was unanimous, too. Yes. Do you have anything to add? Uh, the only other thing I've got to add is, is we actually prepared the application. That's what you're approving. I think it's part of the step as well, which guarantees the 90% funding for the design of the project from the FAA. So for the just that 30,000 design portion? The 38,000 mm -hmm. 30, oh, total design. Mm -hmm. okay. And then if actually if you look 14, into 15. the uh, the application, there's dollars set aside mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. management from your side as well that are eligible for reimbursement. So those are included as well. So that's 90% reimbursement, so city at 10 for financial impact. Right. Motion approving the agreement for professional services with Boltman and Mink in the amount of 38170 and the requested FAA requested schedule. Is there a second? So moved. Motion made and second approving the agreement for professional services with Boltman and Mink in the amount not to exceed $38,170 and the FAA requested schedule. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion adopting resolution 1450, approving submittal of AP, AIP application to FAA to fund the engineering services needed for the Lamar's Airport apron taxiway reconstruction project. Second. Motion made and second adopting resolution number 14-15, approving the submittal AIP application the FAA to fund the engineering services needed for the Lamar's Airport apron and taxiway reconstruction project. Do we have a roll call on that, Bev? Good child. Yes. Rex Sprinkle. Yes. Turkey. Yes. Matt. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, you got another one? Yeah, we got them just so I can find it. And now we got some state applications. That's this. This is federal. Now we're going to the state. And state people don't have anything to do. They just put out paperwork here. <laughs> Be nice at work. No, 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 no. 
questions as an editorial? Or <laughs> We're not going to print it. Oh, yeah, just bear with me. D4, that's what I was <laughs> looking for. Okay, um, this one is the uh, uh, airport application for the state aviation funding. Bolton and Make has prepared the attached documents for state aviation funding to request funds for two projects of the municipal airport. <coughs> the resolution is attached committing, committing the city to fund 30% of the total project not to exceed $13,500 for the two, two projects. Uh, the staff recommends the council for approval. The financial impact, as you can see, the total cost uh, for the T-hanger approach is the $37,000 of state funds is $25,900, and the city, fu city funds are $11,100. The eight-foot wind cone is uh, $8,000 for the total cost. The um, uh, state funds is 5600 and the city funds is 2400 And this, again, is application only, so if it comes back and it's not at 70-30, we can reconsider at that point. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion. Motion adopting resolution number 14-16, approving submittal application for state aviation program funding for key hangar approaches and wind cone at the municipal airport. Is there a so, second? So moved. Motion made and second, adopting resolution number 1416, approving submittal application for the state aviation program funding for T hangar approaches and wind cone at the municipal airport. Do we have a roll call on that, Bill? Yeah. Yes. Good child. Yes. Berkey? Yes. Rexwinkle? Yes. No. Motion carried. I'd make one comment. It's nice that the state is still working with Boltman Mink and the city and moving things forward out there. They aren't always that generous at every airport, so yeah. seems like a little project, but it's nice to see them continue. I think a lot of that has been uh, due to the fact that we've been uh, communicating with uh, both the federal and the state at the annual uh, uh, airport conference meetings in Des Moines. We sit across the table and talk with these people and keep them informed as to what well, we're doing and, and uh, rather, paying off, yeah. rather than over the phone and emails. And thanks to Earl and Matt this Absolutely. year, uh, they're the ones that uh, pretty much was the Lamar's face uh, in front of both state and federal this year. So. Yeah, thanks, thank Matt. We appreciate your help. And Earl, thank you for representing the city down there. Too bad we don't have a railroad meeting we could go to. <laughs> that's, that's coming up. <laughs> and then could you coordinate things with Bev to make sure that it all gets submitted by the night? Absolutely. Thank you. You'll take care of it. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank you very much. Thanks, and you got, did we get the date set on the, uh, for the committee meeting? Yes. Or, yes. The 19th at 3 o'clock, right? Yes. May okay. 19th at 3 o'clock. Okay. That'll, that will, just for the full council's uh, knowledge, uh, 3 o'clock on the 19th, that's a Monday, I believe, is going to be the final uh, airport advisory committee meeting working with Bolton and Mink to finalize the master plan. So mm -hmm. that will be the final meeting as I understand it. That will be the final one. We'll make the final documents and ask for uh, uh, FAA approval of the entire document at that point. Okay. And that will be held here, right? Yes. In this room. Yep. Okay. Thanks a lot, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Appreciate Matt. it. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on to the number five, solid waste uh, collections contract. Van Sanitation has approached the city for a renewal of the, con of the current residential trash and recyclable pickup contract. The city slash Van's contract expires on December 31st, 2014. We are currently concluding year 20 in our relationship with Van Sanitation. By all accounts, this has been a very successful partnership. Vans is requesting a 50 cent increase per residential customer per month. Vans has only increased their contract by the rate of nine cents per customer over the last nine years. This increase would help to fund ongoing operational costs. Vans Sanitation is also requesting an economic development forgivable loan in the amount of $100,000. If approved, this loan would be forgiven equally over a five year period providing the recycling center is still operating. The Solid Waste Committee and the staff recommended that council approve extending the attached 
existing contract with Van Sanitation for a period of five years with a requested 50 cent per customer increase. <coughs> the Solid Waste Committee and staff recommendation recommended that the council approve the requested economic development forgivable loan with Van Sanitation in the amount of $100,000 to be forgiven over five years provided the recycling center remains in operation. The financial impact of these products is, if approved, the increased residential contract cost would be paid from existing fund balance or a possible rate increase. That will be determined once the final numbers are, re are in relating to land and reworking costs for the leaf and grass site are determined. The cost of uh, amortizing the forgivable loan will be funded through the solid waste fund balance. Questions from any of the council? Okay, reworking on the leaf and grass, is that what's already been done or something coming up yet? Well, it's already been decided. Uh, land has been transferred, uh, but the cost of developing that land into a leaf and grass and twig site uh, isn't done yet. And then we also have not, uh, from an accounting standpoint, done any transfer for the ownership of that from wastewater to solid waste. So, so basically, uh, when you look at both of the projects, the potential for the rate increase, and, or Vans change in their contract and the leaf and grass site, uh, customers wouldn't see a rate increase until everything kind of shakes down and we know where the balance sits. So if mm -hmm. we come within what our current balance is, there may not be a rate increase. Uh, as stated. Okay. And isn't a pretty uh, major part of that solid waste fund balance going to go to the purchase of some maintenance equipment? Yes, part of it will. Yeah. Part of it will. Do, do we know what the balance will be after after that purchase? Are you saying do we have 100,000? Yeah, I'm just well, wondering what's... <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, the funds will be there. Yeah, I thought we had 160 left after. We yeah. Is it 160? Right now there's 360 there. Okay. Yeah. So even after There's the transfers, we got enough to yeah, do some work to purchase at the equipment, at the leaf and site, yes. and still spend the hundred. Okay. And um, you answer your question, John. Mm -hmm. Yes. My only comment is, is I doubt if there's any city council in the country that's praising the garbage service provided to their citizens, and has worked with one contractor for 20 years, and has not got millions of complaints as a councilman sitting for 20 years. And has coverage. moderated rates. Yeah. I mean, we're talking nine cents in, in nine years, and, you know, obviously the price of gas hasn't done that. So I think this is a great deal. Motion but, to approve a five-year contract with Van Sanitation covering the period from January 1st, 15, through December 31st, 19, as proposed. Second. Motion made and second to approve five-year contract with Van Sanitation covering the period from January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2019, as proposed. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carried. One motion. quick question on the oh, this question. before you go to your motion. Um, I realize it wouldn't be out of the same fund. Do we have any other um, economic development loans outstanding at this point? Uh, yes, the downtown um, revitalization. Or the no, downtown. Um, Assisted living, we have uh, a note outstanding on that. It's a hundred thousand. Okay, and that one would probably be coming, depending on the term, should be kind of coming to a close. I would think. Uh, Bill held me twenty years. That was a twenty. Oh, that, was a that was a twenty year. year. Okay, yes. so this is just a five year. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, okay. and we're probably ten or eleven years into that twenty yeah, years. But that's that's the only other one, and that was totally different funding source. Well, no, it wasn't quite done. Oh. <laughs> It's across oh, the street. We have the balance on the theater, um, twenty-five thousand of which came from the storefront facade program, so that's spent. The other hundred thousand um, that was to um, sunset for each year that it stays in operation until it's. So it was two was a forgivable, um, and we're in our. Past We've our completed third year. our third year. Yes. We've already completed three. So we only have two more years left on that one. Was that local option funding on that one? I 
I think it was. I think maybe it was local okay. option yeah. funded that. I'd have to look. And the only other one I'm aware of is, uh, so I haven't researched this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew That's a good something. question. We should have been prepared. <laughs> um, is the dialysis center. And that was um, initially 200000 They've accelerated payments on that. And Bill, can you answer the rest? They, they paid 150. They have another 50. But that one wasn't do. a forgivable loan. No. That one was paid back. That, right. was, a, that was a loan made with local option yeah. funds. And that was an interest-free. Yes. Interest-free to be paid back. And, and they're three-quarters done. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that was strictly interest yeah. buy-down, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. okay. Motion to approve forgivable, forgivable economic development loan in the amount of 100000 of van sanitation to be forgiven over five-year period, providing the recycle center remains operational. Second. Is second? Motion made and second to approve a forgivable economic development loan in the amount of $100,000 to van sanitation to be forgiven over a five-year period, provided the recycling center remains in operation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We should, we should Mayor, at least get these guys to, on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, Scott needs to give us a <laughs> briefing <laughs> on uh, where the project stands. Yeah, we need an update, Scott. <laughs> get him on TV. Come on, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the concrete work is done now. Um, they will start on the building, putting all the steel up, um, hopefully starting next week. Um, and then four to six weeks for that. And the equipment. That's getting modified from what we had purchased over in Cherokee, and hopefully we'll be back in place. Everything ready to go by the middle of July is what we're open. So, 1st of August. And I know we've still got the two big um, recycling dumpsters over between Hardware Inc. and the fire station yes. number one. Are there any others around town anymore, or just that, those two? There is one over at the County Emergency Services okay, there was, there building there okay. as well. Yeah, because I noticed that gets quite full. So, yeah. Have you had any problems with that, or people use it the way it's supposed to be used, by and large? There is always some issues. Um, the styrofoam one is some of the is one of the big ones. The styrofoam is a recyclable product, but yet to get rid of it, it you have to have so much because you got to densify it all. And so I would have to have five semi loads of styrofoam sitting there, and then buy a densifier that I can densify it down to one truck load. Okay. And so yeah. So it is something that people can technically put in there, though, all of that styrofoam stuff. There. Yeah, styrofoam, it's one of those things with the, we're not, that we are not recycling right now. Okay. But it's okay if it's put in the bin? It is okay. okay. We ended up getting rid of it, Deal getting rid of it and okay. doing something with it. Well, it's nice to have that there because I see people using that all the time. It yeah. can be a challenge in the wind. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And the other thing, too, is uh, I don't know if we're... Um, letting the public know that the vans is offered or they offer a service of extra pickup so if you have a graduation party or you have Christmas or you have some event at your house and it happens to be the recycle week you can call them and what is it Scott seven, seven. bucks seven dollars seven dollar extra pickup so um, you know I just think that's something we need to sell as a city um, I honestly didn't know that was available so that's, that's a good thing to know because, mm -hmm. like I say, you have those special events when you want your garbage picked up on a recycle right. week. So. Yep. Mayor and I have been talking about on the new magnets when we come out with them for the refrigerator to just put a little note on the bottom that about the $7 <coughs> if they have an sure. extra pickup they need. Good idea. Yeah, sure. We can do that. Yep, that's a good idea. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. I, uh, I want to thank... Uh, Scott and his company for what they do for this city, uh, and not only for the city. Uh, Amity Bork with him on the uh, landfill board of directors also, and uh, this whole program started, I think, in 2005 or somewhere along there on recycling. And today, every town in Plymouth County is on a recycling program. Am I right, Scott? Yes. Yep. And and it's it's countywide now. And that is absolutely can't believe how that has grown and and saving on our landfill program out here. Yes, uh, it's just, it's absolutely amazing to watch that grow. Mm -hmm. The other thing we want to thank you for is uh, is uh, uh, coming in and deciding to put a recycling operation right here in the Mars. There's another industry that is is going to be well worth it for the city of Lamar's. Oh, yeah. So you yep. guys keep doing the good work you're doing. <coughs> 
And we thank you as a council. You know, it's been great working with you for the past 20 years. It's yeah. definitely been a great time. So, thanks. We believe in teamwork, and it's working. That's right. Thank, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate thanks, it. man. Okay, moving on to the next one is the uh, Arts Council funding request. Um, on March 4th, 2014, the representatives of the Mars Art Council brought forth a request to the City Council to help fund improvements to their facility. The Arts Center will be hosting a national traveling exhibit in 2014. The Arts Council was directed uh, to meet with the Community Services Committee. Since that council meeting, the Arts Council has met with the Community Services Committee twice. The request for funding from the county lost was not approved by the county level. The Arts Council has secured volunteers to help with part of the project, scaled back part of the project, and has received lower coats for work to be done. This project will add needed fire protection to make upstairs restrooms handicap accessible and will return the upstairs floors back to their original wood finish. The Arts Council is requesting financial support from the city to make this remodeling project happen this summer. The Community Services Committee, Community Services Committee recommendation was, is recommending that the City Council approve funding in the amount of $10,000 to help the Arts Council complete this project. The financial impact would be the $10,000 funding. They could come from the lost funds, it could come from hotel motel funds, or it could come from the general fund balance. <coughs> Is there any questions uh, regarding? As part of the Community Services Committee, I just want to let everybody know that that 10,000, close to half, not quite, but is uh, close to half of that is directly related to this being a city-owned building. The fire protection mm -hmm. is something that Chief Shipper said we need to have in there. And the handicapped accessible restroom now that we have handicapped access via the lift that was put in, mm -hmm. now we need a restroom that will work. Yep. So two of the three items are actually in large part city items. The which, which we mean we need to bring up to specs. Yeah, yeah. So about half of it we need to do regardless. And the other portion with the way that they got the price done and everything for that floor, I think it will just be a great addition we for do some have, upcoming events. We do have two representatives here from the Art Council, so. Yes. And as the second member of that committee, um, I'd also reiterate that this um, watercolor exhibit that's coming to Lamar's for, I think, five weeks, starting in September, is a really big deal. And it, it brings a yes. lot of people from a, from a big area. And uh, here, here we have a, a, a a group of people, the Arts Council, that exists, and we want to we want to shine it. We want to make it shine for that special event, and hopefully, just generate more energy for additional events. So, yeah. Um, and we we're, we're very grateful that you're looking at it in that aspect because that's the way we view it too. And and we're very <coughs> proud to be able to have this show and work. You need to introduce yourself. Because I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought everybody knew me by yeah. now. Um, I'm Judy Marino, and I'm the Lamar's um, Arts Council administrator at the Art Center, and I've been there since January 15th. And um, we've put lots of things into motion um, since I've been there. You know, we're really, you know, we're really getting going. Um, we we really appreciate you know what you're doing for us. Um, and in one of the committee meetings, um, someone said you might need to have plan B for the flooring. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> we pulled back a little bit more of the flooring. I don't know if Jason had a chance to get over there and take a look at it. Um, but, you know, after we had the committee meeting, we just thought, you know what, let's, let's pull back more than this much and see what we have underneath here. And so I did. I pulled back a fair amount, and there is um, the nine-inch linoleum tiles that are glued to the maple wood floors. Um, and there could be another layer of linoleum under that. So um, we, have, we were trying to get this all done by volunteers, um, but we can't ask volunteers, especially high school students or council board members, to scrape off the tiles because they could possibly have asbestos. So plan B, um, I have priced out in two different places 
so far, um, and I'd like to get one more at least, but we have looked at a, another flooring option that would include taking out the carpet only and leaving the linoleum tile glued to the floor, um, which might be why the maple floors never have been out before because there was the tile over them. Um, so anyway, now we're hoping that we would remove the linoleum that's in there, remove the carpeting that is in there, and then we'd put a floating, um, we've looked at a couple different options, like a floating kind of a linoleum floor, something that looks like stone that locks together that's kind of easy installation. Um, we really don't want to go really cheap because this is something we hope that we won't be redoing again anytime soon, so we want a good option for us. Um, I don't think necessarily carpeting is an option just because of all the windows that are in the building. Um, but we'd like to entertain the idea of possibly not refinishing those maple wood floors, although it's very hard to swallow because we were all really hoping for those. <laughs> um, and I think that if we were to hire somebody else to do it, possibly um, they would do it. But I, my concern is definitely the asbestos for the community and being a city building and anybody that comes into contact with it. So. What's the square footage of that? 1,800 square feet is the main gallery. And that's, that's the entire main floor. That's all three gallery areas. Okay. So. Enough. Any yeah. other questions? For I do have something there. Yeah. We did get some more information about 10 minutes before this meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we had thought the fire system that was needed, what was needed for the fire code, was going to be in the thirteen to $1,500 range. We actually just got the bid, and it's eighty-seven hundred dollars. So, that's pretty well going to eat up the ten thousand. So, and I do believe there's a two thousand dollar bid in from Anthony for the plumbing for the bathroom, for just, and that's just the plumbing. Yeah, that's just the plumbing. It'd be another two to three thousand for labor for that. So right. Probably looking at five thousand for the restroom. Right. So, what are we looking at then? So we're wondering if we're just called to clean the carpets that are there for this show, <laughs> or you know, we, we don't know what the process is here. If it could go back to committee to be considered. We, we yeah. had left the last committee meeting hopeful that, you know, we might have assistance in the vicinity of five or $6,000 on flooring, you know. And, it, and it, please don't think we're not appreciative of the updates that are going to happen, that need to happen for fire and for the bathroom. We are. We really are. But um, Yeah, and for safety reasons, that's definitely important. You know, really the, the painting the walls, the new gallery hanging system, the new flooring, et cetera, is really visual. I mean, that's really for, the, for people coming in that it's going to look fresher, neater, and better. So it's not necessarily for the safety or for handicap accessible, and we understand that. And the, the flooring bid that I did get the, of the two, of the lowest of the two, um, was 67, 10, 22, and that was not installed. That was just the flooring and the underlayment. So, and it, it's something that's easy enough that possibly we could have volunteers and sell it, but we'd like to entertain the idea no, of having it. Jump from 1500 to 8, we, we didn't have an estimate, I guess, before. And, okay. But Dave did actually go out with Campbell and they went through everything. Okay. Um, came back with a higher bid, and, and then he and Dave went through the list again, and to get it down to the bare minimum was 8700 Okay. Okay. I would think that. A couple of weeks, maybe back to the council with the numbers put together and decisions made on what they yeah, actually want. Can we put this on hold? Yeah. It, yeah, I'd like to put this on hold if that's mm -hmm. possible. And there are some pretty good uh, floating tiles. If, mm -hmm. you, if you look around a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. go yeah. online and look. Uh, and, and most of them recommend just installation by the homeowner, homeowner. or the, or the mm -hmm. building owner. Yep, and that's what we were kind of looking at my my husband's pretty handy not that he's really willing to do the project but he's pretty handy but um that's what we're looking at is kind of like a floating tile and like i said i've only priced it out in two places right now and you know i think we can try to get a third one in there maybe a little bit well, less there's also so. prefinished wood floors which would be more in keeping with the historic aspect of the building than something that looks like stone well you can get floating wood plank too, <coughs> yeah so. yes you can yep yeah, yeah. I, would, I would tend to go with that more than the stone look, just from the historic aspect. I don't think any. I don't think anybody's going to leave you hanging, but I think it needs to go back, and we need to start to review this stuff and, and okay. kind of regroup and, and sure. start and get all the actual figures. Sure. You know what we're talking and about regroup okay. and see what we can do because okay. There, so. Okay. Very Thank good. you so much. Yep. So you bet. Thank so you. we're just going to motion to table this until the May 16th or May 20th council meeting. Second. Second. 
Motion made uh, to table this request uh, until the next council meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next one is the Iowa 3 West Trail change order. In February 2014, the bid for the Iowa 3 West Trail, a STPE project, was awarded to Peterson Contractors Incorporated, Rhinebeck, Iowa in the amount of $246,153.21. DGR staff and contractor have met to discuss cost reductions and have deleted five work items entirely and reduced one by approximately 22.9%. The net result of the contract reduction of $32,231.10 and yielding a cost savings of approximately $20,000. DGR and staff recommend approval of the cost reduction change order and a revised contract amount of $213,922.11. The remaining schedule is to begin construction May 27, 2014 as the latest start date and end construction 30 working days. The financial impact is a grant of 80% up to the maximum of $160,000 of construction and city funds all other costs. The city's share would be, real, would be funded through the Lamar's Urban Renewal Joint Urban Renewal uh, TIF revenue. Note, the propo proposed change order has not, excuse me, the proposed change order has been sent to DOT on April 29th. Also, Eisman's Homes has agreed to pay one-half cost along their frontage at an estimated cost of $10,550 or so special assessment. So what, what did we change that made the reduction possible? Scott, you want to share um, that? Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to really uh, table this when I'm done. This is another one that... Uh, I thought it was resolved until it hit the state uh, in written form. Um, well, we, to answer your question, John, um, item number one of the bid was compaction with moisture and density control. And so uh, city staff would do that instead of the contractor. So it's still in kind, it's in kind work then. It's not it's in kind. It's a reduction of this contract, but we're going to pick up costs elsewhere. So it's not really a cost reduction then. <laughs> Correct? Oh, oh, yeah, if you want to take their time and material, uh, time okay. and equipment into account. All right. Yep. Um, also, special compaction of the subgrade for the recreation trail. Also, the detectable warnings, the driveway, and the traffic control for that driveway to Riverview Park. So those are the items. And so those still need to be done, and so that's why it's not a one-for-one -one cost savings. That's why, uh, that's why you've calculated that really we're going to have a $20,000 cost savings, not a $32,000, because you were considering those things. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I've got about 10 emails here that have gone back and forth between Brian Wells and the State Office of Advanced Planning. Um, and so um, the component um, about deleting some of the trail itself was not looked upon favorable by the FHWA through the DOT. So that's why we really can't decide this today. Um, Brian is still uh, waiting for a final resolution from the Office of Advanced Planning. So we took the pre-construction conference that was scheduled for May 15th and pushed it out to May 22nd instead so that we could get through the May 20th council meeting on this change order first. Because um, I told DGR, we really need to know what the contract involves before we have a pre-construction on the contract. So we pushed the pre-con pre -con back uh, a week so that we could get a final resolution from the state. Motion to table till the 20th of May. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second approving. Excuse me. Motion made and second, tabling uh, this request until the 20th of May. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next one. Hey, can I ask one question on the one we just uh, just mm -hmm. out of curiosity? This ten thousand three hundred is is that the amount or is that the half amount? And I mean, it's a moot point. I mean, but he's that, that's the amount. That is the total for amount. the for the uh, Eisman home. Right, right. For the shared. So this is the full amount. Is he pay half of it? Would no, he's going to oh, pay. So this is how half. much they pay. That's oh, the half. That's what yeah. he's paying. Okay, good enough. Okay. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, the next one is the uh, Code of Ordinance. No, she, no. no. Or one more. Or we got one down on some of us. I got too many papers in front of me. <laughs> I want to know what size of hammer she used to get the staples for these packets. Maybe for this <laughs> <laughs> one about 10,000 bucks. Okay. Uh, We're back. Excuse me, thank you. Uh, Plymouth County and Lamar's Urban Renewal Area uh, Modifications. Attached is an engagement letter with John Danos, Bond Council, with Dorsey and Whitney, Plymouth County, and the City. The Plymouth County Supervisors have discussed the agreement at their April 29, 2014 meeting and did not approve it. At the April 21, 2014 meeting, the Joint Urban Renewal Board unanimously, unanimously approved the engagement letter from Dorsey and Whitney. The city and the county desire to restructure the Joint Urban Renewal Arrangement. Further information will be available at the meeting. And Scott, you want to you share with us uh, where we're at on that? I guess I didn't hear what happened today. They were Excuse me? Uh, are you talking about the... County? They tabled it now a second time, right? Yeah. Okay. But they haven't, they did not approve it. That was that was not true. So really it should, it's just the a first table. The says table. they tabled it, not did not approve it. They just tabled it. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, basically what this does is it's um, hiring Dorsey Whitney uh, both by the city and by the county. And so that's why they want it in writing. There is a potential conflict to have one attorney. And um, they wanted it in writing and pre-approved before they do any work. So that's why it's before both entities. That's why we took it to the Joint Urban Renewal Board to start with. There's three voting members from you folks and there's three voting members from the Board of Supervisors. And that morning it was unanimous to proceed with this. Um, what we would be doing in effect is uh, taking what is known as the Joint Urban Renewal Area, the Joint Urban Renewal TIF, and um, putting it uh, entirely under the City of Lamar's compared to it being jointly under City and County. I mean, that's in a nutshell what we would do. In order to do that, the law allows that um, in all their statutes. And, and uh, there's a corresponding uh, letter that we had gotten from John Daniels that outlines the process. But we really feel that we need to take this one step at a time. Both parties need to be in agreement to doing this in order to accomplish it. So and, and the reason Dorsey and Whitney was selected was they were the one that put together the joiner renewal in the first place. So we both used them for the beginning, and we're both going to use them now. And it only makes sense to do it that way. Totally agree. And in fact, that office put all of our... <laughs> that office put all of our uh, was urban that. renewal <laughs> districts together, all four of them. Um, the Westmar, the Floyd Valley Hospital that ceased already. Westmar is going to cease in a couple of uh, years. Um, the Lamar's Urban Renewal, plus the expanded Lamar's Urban Renewal, and now this joint. They, that office has done every single one. Um, they're the most, as Rex pointed out, they're certainly the most logical choice to modify it at this point. 
uh, we don't want to modify really what the um, joint urban renewal area as put together by the joint urban renewal plan. We don't want to change that other than what I've already spoke, that uh, it would just all fall under the city of Lamar's uh, and not under the county. And that way, um, there would be no need for the Joint Urban Renewal Advisory Board. You, the city council, would rule on it just like you rule on every other urban renewal. And it would solely fall on your shoulders to figure out what to do, when to do it, when to spend the money, what to, sp what to spend the money on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we had told um, the county in the joint meeting with them that 100%, uh, I want to repeat, 100% of any outstanding obligation that the county has on the books would be covered. 100% would be covered. At the time of the dissolution of the joint urban renewal? It would be covered, well, Elena, it would be covered under the revised plan such that there would probably be a supplemental agreement between the city and the county to cover 100% of their obligations using the same money, the joint, the, the TIF dollars that are being generated in the area would be used, but on a more accelerated basis. Um, and some of what has transpired here is uh, the agreement that was put together in 2004 um, anticipated certain things happening in that district and uh, lo and behold, they have, they have occurred. Uh, what maybe didn't occur to the degree that we thought or the county thought is that most of the activity is being picked up by the city, you. As such, the uh, distribution of TIF revenue to the city versus the county uh, has got a big slant to it at this point. Um, that 2004 agreement the plan itself anticipated that uh, for every dollar that came in, the jurisdiction that had on a pro rata basis the expenditure would get those dollars. And again, on a pro rata basis. So a simple analogy would be if we went along from 04 to present, 10 years, and uh, the total was 10,000 and the city picked up 5,000 of that, the county picked up 5,000, then any TIF revenue that came in over that 10-year period would be disseminated 50-50. Well, that hasn't occurred. Uh, Bill uh, created the spreadsheet that showed uh, what the county has picked up versus what the city has picked up and uh, what that's coming to in the next uh, most current fiscal years, uh, 14, 15, and 16, is looking like 89-11. It's no longer 50-50. It's 89% coming to the city, 11% going to the county. Therein lies the problem. As more and more uh, economic development efforts are being done by the city versus the county, that percentage is even going to get disproportionate even more. It's going to get to a point where it's 90-some uh, uh, percent city and less than 10% uh, county. So I, I think it's the fairer thing to do, and if, um, if the county's less economic development inclined, and you're more inclined to do that, then we just as well have a plan that reflects that. And so it, as, as it gets more and more 100% city, uh, our thought to the county was maybe it should be 100% city. So make it 100% city, recognize the 10 years of obligations that, that were in fact on the city or the county shoulders, recognize that, and in a supplemental agreement, agree to pay that off sooner than later. And the three supervisors that were, are in, on the joint there's just two, There's only two oh, supervisors two. and a non, another voting county representative, just, oh, okay. just like the city has two plus one. Otherwise, we'd have so, a problem. So, all three county representatives. Yeah. So, the two supervisors that were there so, great. were yep. amenable to working with yes. Danos and, and yep. making these revisions. As well as, was there a third part of that meeting? Yeah, all three. The, uh, 
1992 Lamar's Urban Renewal, uh, you know, there, the first 10 years, um, you start seeing it, but you don't fully see it. We see it now because it's been 20. Uh, we're, we're less than five years from sunset on that. That was 1992. It was a 25-year plan, so it's, I think it's scheduled to sunset in 2017. And, and there might be some dribble that comes in in FY18, but that's just the way people pay taxes. So we can see it now, and to the degree that you have voted during the budget process for the last two consecutive fiscal years that you decided to budget, that a um, million dollars we would allow to go back to the other jurisdictions. So in that, that's working. What, the only reason I'm bringing this up, I believe that the joint urban renewal will also prove to work equally as well. The numbers are already supporting that. And so I think there's a little risk on your part to uh, making the obligation to the county to make 100% county obligations whole, 100%. And I don't believe that's a huge risk on your part. So I support it uh, more than 100%. I really think this is the proper thing to do to, to just get it resolved so that we don't add levels of bureaucracy to economic development. Uh, Neil's in the audience, he can speak to that. That is not good for growth. So if it didn't work the way we envisioned it to work in 2004, I say let's change it and change it for the good on both parties. It's a win-win for both of us. I would encourage you to sign or to approve and I certainly recommend you approve uh, this uh, uh, joint representation letter with uh, Dorsey Whitney and allow us additional time to uh, go back to each and every of the board members and make sure that we're all on the same page. Any other questions? What is the county's hesitation for wanting out, not for wanting, not wanting out? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what's the, I don't quite get that. I haven't attended any of their meetings up there. It was unanimous in this room when we had the joint advisory. It was unanimous. I don't know. If, if, I, if we had had the whole urban renewal area just in the city through this whole time, we would have still put in the street that they put in and still spent the $2 million on the street because the street has to be in for the joint urban renewal to have a chance, right? So all we're doing is basically saying that's an obligation, no different than a uh, uh, new sewer plant, no different than the, the other things that we've put in for water, for um, the RV place, water for uh, what wells, water for icon, all, all those kind of things are in this area and they're all gonna service this area. So all we've been thinking is that we created too many boards for somebody to come in town to jump through to get something built. They got to go to joint, then they got to go to both supervisors and the city, and then they both got to get approved. Then they got to figure out who's going to approve it with what dollars, and then they finally get to build. That process might take six months, might take eight months, depending on the meetings and whether they table it or not. Our idea is to short that time frame down a little bit because we understand how it works. Scott mentioned. Uh, well, I call it the South Ice Cream, Mars number one. But we've also got even the Westmar TIF, which is going to pay all spills for doing Westmar when we bought, when we bought Westmar. So we're not, we're not having failures in TIF like maybe some other cities are having. We're watching the dollars. We're not spending them ahead. We're making sure that they're going to cover the revenues. Um, we even, you know, put some down into... Uh, where Four Brothers is, where Tom Mazur is. We've got that money coming back. I mean, we've done a lot of things that have actually worked. So maybe we're just more understandable because we've seen it work. Because we've been there long enough and seen it work. But I don't know what their hang up is, but I th our reason for putting it on the agenda here is we'd like to get it done by the end of June because the new tax year starts July 1st for cities. 
so then we wouldn't have to bifurcate a year and make more things more confusing for the county and the assessors and everybody else up at the courthouse. That, I forgot that point. Thank you, Rex. That, that's, to me, vital, too. The clean cutoff would be at the start of a fiscal year. Because otherwise, let's just say for sake of argument, and let's, let's be really negative, we're not going to get it done until July 31. You're going to then take one month, but you've got to wait until June 30th of the following year to figure right. out what one twelfth mm -hmm. of that revenue is going to be. Right. Right. And she's got to record all those payments twice to see what those revenues are. Oh, and then a year later, we're going to track back and figure out what the number was. That's just, that, we're just trying to make it simple for both sides. Uh, I think they, uh, I mean, they understand it obviously in the morning that we had the meeting. I think they're going to vote for it. I just think maybe they're waiting for us to vote for it first. That's okay. I'm going to vote for it first. So basically, we just need to approve this letter, and right. then at that point, either city staff or joint urban renewal board representatives or some combination thereof will work with the supervisors to yep. get theirs done in a timely manner. Yep. Okay. And get our agreement for how we're going to pay for this road that they have financed. Get that in there so it's actually you know, like Scott said to make uh, them whole. Uh, actually, a legal agreement between the city and the county. Yeah. yeah. Which is all part of this deal with Dan. Absolutely. He will help. Yep. Figure all that out so everything yep. happens at once. Yeah. Dan yep. Danos has agreed to work with both the city and the county as long as we can come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. yep. If exactly. we can't, then he's got to be mutual. Yeah. Right. And that's what this letter does. That's what Which the, that's the only way to do it. That's well, the way to work with one them. other concept okay. that you, I think it's important too um, that it all becomes under the city because if we've got some fairly major expenditures on the w wastewater side and the water side. And 100 percent of those expenditures need to be certified, I, and I can't stress that enough. They need to be certified, and um, to ratchet that back to a 60 percent level is unacceptable to me. As your city administrator, we've got to protect the house, and the way to protect the house for the city is to certify all the debt, not a portion of the debt, all the debt. Well, the more we certify, I already stated, it's going to dilute the return of TIF dollars. So um, that's proof positive. <laughs> that's got, this has got to be underneath the city. Well, plus if it gets diluted, wouldn't that slow down their payback on what's already outstanding? Yes. They would get I mean, little to I mean, no like, dollars. It's like ratcheting to, back a faucet. It yeah. Just, so this is actually a way for them to get their investment back out. Yeah, they're going to get sooner. in. They're going to get home much okay. quicker. Right. Probably four times quicker. Motion approving joint legal representation letter with Dorsey and Whitney LLP regarding the County Lamar's urban renewal area restructuring. Is there a second? Second. The motion been made and second approving a joint legal representation letter. A joint legal rep representation letter with Dorsey and Whitney. LLP regarding the Plymouth County Lamar's Urban Renewal Area Restructuring. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, number, oh wait, we got the contract. Right. Should be more order than that, shouldn't I? You're right. You're right. That's right. You're right. That's where we are. Number nine. Code. You can't get organized on ten. I know. <laughs> I can't get organized on three. Code ordinance of changes. Um, the council approved the second reading on the ordinance nine number nine nineteen on April fifteenth two thousand fourteen. The proposed ordinance changes are ninety point oh five compliance with plumbing code eliminating international plumbing code and change the state of Iowa plumbing code. Section 9104, location of meters, eliminate the need for outside remote meters. Section 10511, prohibit practices, making placing makes placing non-recyclables in a recyclable container findable. Section 10505, open burning restricted, designates the fire chief or his designee as the sole issues of the open burning permits. Section 135-11, maintenance of parking or terrace and pruning and Corner clearance uh, eliminates the city's responsibility for the removal of trees or portions thereof that lie within the public right of way and places it on the uh, abutting uh, property owner. 
Section 13515, private irrigation systems within a right-of-way, allows for the placement of private irrigation systems in the public right-of-way, but gives the city the authority to order the removal of the system or portion thereof and states that the city shall not be held liable for any damage caused to the system. Section 15603, recreational fires, states the parameters for which can, recreational fires will be allowed. Has been a policy of the city for years, but has never been in the code of ordinances. Your Honor, yeah, I'd like to pull section 13511 and 15117 regarding uh, pruning or tree maintenance in the parking out for a separate vote. Okay. Uh, since since we've started discussions on this, the media has done a nice job of covering the issues potentially with the ash borer and and uh, other potential problems regarding the tree trimming. We've enjoyed these trees all these years as a city, and I believe it's a city responsibility to take care of those trees. Uh, it's a tremendous hardship for the homeowner, and as uh, Mr. Faber said earlier, uh, there's a, a huge cost involved, and there's potential issues as far as uh, those trees in the parking, as far as the liability is concerned. Again, I believe they're a city issue and should be. We should not change that ordinance. Was not there some conversation on this in the last meeting? Well, we talked about a rebate cost sharing, cost, cost sharing. I, but I'm, rebates. I'm to the point. I've had contacts since then from individual property owners, and uh, I believe that it should be a full city cost. Any other comments? I don't have a problem with going back to the old ordinance. It, it has worked, but I, I do think the other eliminates a lot of liability on the city. Uh, originally, uh, John, you'd break requested that the city reimburse at some point. And I really don't have a problem with that. Uh, is it reimbursement as long as we find a revenue source uh, such as two dollars a month or something for to get into your to help pay that. So either I can go either way, but uh, I think it's cleaner to get the liability off the city and we have plenty of people that can trim trees and take them down. We just have to figure out who's going to pay for it. Yeah, and, and can uh, you know even if we go back to the city responsibility, that may be such they can go out for a bid on a certain number of trees a year and that type of thing. Because, like I say, it's a tremendous hardship for the property owner. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't doubt that, and I think that creating some type of revenue source that everybody would pay a little bit in, but it would help take care of it in an orderly manner. I, right, we could address that when we're, when we're talking uh, budget. Time, uh, yeah. whether we feel, feel we're going to be short on dollars or not but at this stage I'd just like to keep the ordinance as it is and I guess my only issue with keeping it as it is um, essentially when we say it's the city responsibility and the city cost the city is each and every one of us exactly, so it's, exactly. it's when you want your tree, tree removed you ask the other seven of us up here to pay for it exactly and you know, you don't do that when you have your sprinkler system fixed. You don't do that when you have your roof fixed. You don't do that when you have your furnace fixed. Well, the point I'm making, uh, Delana, is the fact that we've had these trees all these years. The city has dealt with these trees all these years. We've enjoyed the, the visual effects of these trees. It, I believe it still continues to be a city responsibility, however it's handled. The city has a lot of responsibilities for a lot of things that we all cost share on. So, And I think it needs to be said that the city wants to retain control of what happens under the ground under these trees. So while you're right, you may own it or it may be sitting on your property. Um, I tend to agree with John on this. Um, I think it is it is a city problem. Um, I have no problem with some sort of a cost sharing. Um, I think maybe we should look into that in the future. But there again, I, I side with John that I think this needs to be pulled. And if, if we want to look into some sort of a stream of revenue or some way of cost sharing with people um, we, we readdress this in a year once we've got some plan that says hey 24 inch diameter 36 inch diameter 180 inch diameter trees you get so much back from the city and I'm fully fully in favor of that but we sit up here and we brag we didn't raise taxes but if we lessen services we did raise taxes that's all there is to it so um, I think we come up with an, with an alternative plan within six months or a year and we, we revisit this. But 
I'm with John. I, I want, I'm, I'm probably not going to support this right now. I think it, it remains the city's um, responsibility at this point. Or you keep taxes down by reducing services. That's how taxes are kept low and we stay at the same levy rate that we had previous year. You're still going to vote on them. You're just going to vote on them separately if you follow what John wants right. to do. Right. Still he wants to just pull one. Right. Absolutely. So okay. it's not like you're tabling them. You're going to vote okay. on them because you've right. already voted on them. But Right. And I'd make a motion not to change sections 135.11 and section 151.17 regarding maintenance of parking or terrace and pruning of corner and corner clearance. Uh, no. Not to change it. It would, no. it would be it would be preferred, I think, to vote on the remaining okay. six one time. All right. And then approve the remaining six one time. All right. And then vote on just the two, right. one time, and the approval one time. If we need to, just I mean, I mean that's that's a more proper than proper com works. combining them. All right. Well, right now, it's one ordinance that's had two readings. So what do we have? Third ordinance number nine nineteen A and B. <laughs> Tell us what to do. <laughs> I don't know, but this I remember. I'm I'm getting to know this by heart. This is the third time I've yeah, read this. Fourth it time I've read this code, so. I don't care what we do, let's get it handled. <laughs> this is the third reading. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that you could motion for the ones that the six of them are however many six. it is. And then deny the third reading of the other two. Right. You're going to have to amend your Joe, why not you they either got to uh, say yes or no to uh, the third reading of Ordinance 919, with or without those sections. So they're amending Ordinance 919. They are right now, yeah, if they follow the John's do. Well, yes. If, if two of those sections get deleted from there, you, in effect, are modifying that ordinance. Right. Can we do that at this stage? I guess what I'd like to see is that you make a, that somebody makes a motion to approve the third reading as is. If it, if it goes through, it goes through. I will do that. Motion approving the third reading of ordinance number 919, uh, modifying or adding section 90.05, section 91.04, section 105.04. 5, section 105.11, section 135.11, section 135.15, section 151.17, and section 156.03 of Lamar's Code of Ordinance. Second. Motion made and second, approving third reading of the ordinance number 919, and modifying or adding section 90.05, section 91.04, section 105.05, section 105.11, section 135.11, Section 135.15, Section 151.17, and Section 156.03 of the Lamar's Code of Ordinances. Do we have a roll call on that, Beth? Nelson? Nay. Rexwinkle? No. Goodchild? No. Berkey? Yes. Nah. Yes. Motion didn't pass. So then you want to do one to modify? Somebody want to do one to modify? Do we have a new number then? No, it's still the same ordinance. It's just a motion of modifying ordinance number 919 by motion. I don't know what to do here. Well, you're going to you're going to delete two sections. Yeah, you're going to modify and adjust. On a positive side, you're going to modify and adjust all the sections that you want to. And you're going to leave out okay. whichever sections you don't want. Motion modifying ordinance number 919 for sections 9005, section 9104, section 10505, section 10511, section 13515, and section 15603 of the Lamar's Code of Ordinances. On its third, On its third reading. I'll second. Motion made and second, adopting ordinance number 919, modifying or adding section number 9005, section 9104, uh, section 10505, eliminating or is it eliminating? No, no, we're fine. 
You're fine. 105. 105. 11, section okay. 1. Now don't do the next one. Just do just to skip down to 15. 135. 15. Yep. 135.15, section 150. Nope. nope, this one. 156.03. Yep. Yep. Do we have a roll call on that, Bev? Nelson? Yes. Knapp? Yes. Erky? No. Rex Winkle? Yes. Good job. Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Motion adopted 919. As modified. As modified. As modified. Section 90.05. Oh, I got to read that too. 104, 105.05, 105.05. <laughs> <laughs> One thirty five fifteen, one fifty six oh three on this third reading. Second. Motion made and second. Adopting ordinance nine nineteen, modifying or adding section nine oh five ninety oh five, section ninety one oh four, section one oh five oh five, section one thirty five fifteen is eleven. One oh thirty five eleven. 13515. 13515. And 15603. 15603 of the Lamar's Code Ordinance of the third reading. Could we have a roll call on that, Beth? Nelson? Yes. Good child? Yes. Berkey? No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Jason, I hope these uh, code ordinances get where you want them. You got any comments on this stuff? I just want. I want to make sure. <clears throat> now the tree list is back in effect. I just want to make sure. Yeah, and yes. our budget that we just approved is wrong. But, but, what, but what, 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 what everybody's asking for is asking for if we're going to change it, we just got to have some revenue to somehow compensate homeowners for their hardship. So your little task is to try to figure out a way to make this fair and amicable between <laughs> homeowners and city so that we're not out there doing ridiculous amount of works, but also it's somehow being paid for. We, uh, that's, that's I believe right. that's what well, everybody said. I think the control has got to stay now with the city as to when a tree gets modified. Because we already have it written in there that the well, I mean, tree We're has going to back to the way it was. So we decide when trees get taken care of. But is disease, is that dying, what you guys, I believe but, you did? But one of the reasons I was supported is I'm hoping that we'll do things like we did with stormwater uh, tax that we have on our, everybody in town pays. So every time we have a drainage issue, we have some money and not a deficit. And I hope that can happen with the trees so we can set it up for a dollar or two dollars a month goes into our funds and will help cover those costs so that we can afford to do it the way we've been doing it. And we'll deal like we did with the Dutch Elm disease. Yeah, we'll it, 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 it would allow us to build some funds up instead of going away in debt on the thing before we make another decision. So yeah, hopefully uh, these... So you want to add another tax? I, I want to add a dollar or two dollars, whatever it takes, whatever seems reasonable to develop enough money so the city can I'm afford to continue. But we, see, but we need, can't we need to see where we're, where we're going from here now well, because well, we've already been doing it. So sure, I'm sure. just saying that the, our past is the four D's. Um, it's we only take it if the tree. And there's a human being that makes that decision. <laughs> it's not just uh, with the city. Uh, it's got to be dead, dying, diseased, or dangerous, and that's not dead, dying, disease, or dangerous in the property owner's opinion. Correct. Correct. No pun intended, but their opinion don't count here. If, the, if you're going to leave the ordinance the way it is, which you just did, then the city staff has to decide that. Correct? Yeah, and I think the city staff... I mean, if you don't want it that way, I'm not trying to dictate. Yeah. If you don't want it that way, I would suggest that you ask us to change the ordinance in some fashion that you want, different than the past. I personally see the city's doing, doing an excellent job of determining what. But let's say Jay time. Flavor, he isn't here to defend himself, yeah. but he wants potentially a tree taken because it's pushing up the sidewalk. And quote unquote, that causes the tree to be dangerous. Not in my opinion. The sidewalk's dangerous, not the tree. 
Yeah. I would agree, Delana. The sidewalk becomes dangerous because an external force, that being the tree roots, but that doesn't mean that we need to take that tree. But a sidewalk Are we all on that page? Yeah, and I mean, if the root has to be removed to fix the sidewalk and the tree dies as a result, or if you have to the loop city... the sidewalk around a little ways, you, you, you make the accommodation. That's what I suggested to him yesterday was, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're saying you're going to replace the sidewalk anyway, just bring it around. I hate to see a perfectly good tree be sacrificed um, when we could move a sidewalk. And you're already saying that you'll pay for the sidewalk. Now, I'm not picking on Jay. He's a friend of mine, um, an acquaintance of mine, and he's, like you say, he's not here, but um, I, I just want to support some sort of a cost share. Um, I don't look at it as a buzz budget issue because it's already the city, so it, it didn't change our costs from yesterday to today by a nickel. Our, it was our responsibility yesterday, so it's still our responsibility if we deem the tree to be bad. Now, if we need help paying for it, or if we want to get into a cost share thing, I think that's that's what we need to do. Um, so. But we didn't calculate that into that twenty odd thousand that is spent because of this potential change in ordinance. Am I correct? It's not calculated into the. City we never discussed change of ordinance at the budget time. Budget. No, but I think we subtracted it from public works from their expenses. I don't think we lowered our budget. Say, I don't know, but I don't remember lowering our budget. And I don't think twenty thousand would cover it anyway, even if it was. I mean, from, that's that's forty trees. I think the city has done a good job in the past, and I think what we're saying is let's let the city continue, and if we need to find a funding source at budget time or before budget time, we'll work on that. You agree with everybody? Yep. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, we passed this, didn't we? We don't need more votes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't you want to read, read that every right. time. <laughs> read it again. No. <laughs> wastewater, uh, wastewater fees. Attached are two lists. The, number one is the current wastewater fee was approved January 14th, 2000, or January 2014. Number two, the proposed wastewater fees. Utility company is reviewed and is recommending council approval. The financial impact, additional revenues to wastewater department in four areas. Number one is the increased sanitary sewer tapping fee. Number two is the new sanitary sewer connection fee. And number three is the new ceiling sanitary sewer line connection fee. And number four is a new sump pump inspection fee. Uh, when I first read this, uh, I, I thought, oh, here goes my, here goes my rate, or here goes my fees up. But I want to point out that these are more tapping, connection, and, and uh, inspection fees than anything else. And these are things that the water department has done for years in a similar, in a similar manner. Why, why we haven't done it with wastewater before, I don't know because it is some of those tapping fees are can be very costly to the sure. city or to that department so I, I think what we as a committee we look it over and we think it's a, a, a good way to go he's basically will deal with development development and sale mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. motion approving to revise 2014 wastewater fees as recommended is there a second so moved Motion made and second approving. The revised 2014 wastewater fees is recommended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Dean's Rail Spur. I want to point out to you, council members, there's a uh, typographical error where it says down at the bottom, staff and golf course. That should read, <laughs> that should, uh, read staff and rail committee. I don't know how that golf course got involved. Man, but <laughs> Bones Rail Spur or Bodine's Rail Spur. Attached is a rail spur design and layout for Bodine's Baking Company. This design will allow Bodine's to transport flour into their two plants via a transload facility. The city needs to review and approve all connections to the city-owned industrial track. <coughs> CN has also, may also need to approve said design if they continue to operate the city track. However, if city is successful with contracting a short line, then CN need not approve. 
The rail committee and staff have been discussing the short line concept with CN. However, have not been successful so far. <coughs> Additional efforts are being pursued. The rail committee and the staff recommend the council approval for Dean's uh, rail spur program. This Financial does. impact is all the cost of individual industry, all the cost of individual industry spur tracks and connections to the city track are funded by the industry. No for us, we just have no. to approve for them. There's, there's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it all does is connect to our rail system. We just want to, yeah. uh, we just want to give Deans the opportunity to, to use the rail. Uh, system. Motion approving Bodine's Baking Company rail spur design layout and connection to the city industrial track. Is there a second. second. Most been made and uh, uh, second, uh, approving Bodine's Baking rail spur design layout and connection to the industrial track. So we have, is, is CN opposed to this, or are they just not responding, or are we not? Are you talking about Bodine's? No, I'm talking CN. CN. Are they opposed to approving this? I'm curious. I I don't, what we're voting on now, I no, don't. they have no control over that. That's oh, it says right here, the Rail Committee staff have been successful with short line concept with CN, however, has not been successful so far. Two, diff two different things. What we we're, trying to, we're trying to get an agreement from the switch in to have a short line rail. Right. And, and Bodine's is just asking for a spur off of our rail system. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We don't need Huh? We don't need rail. Oh, we don't on that? We could. You don't get paid for both. Okay. <laughs> uh, is there a motion on Yeah. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Some paperwork someplace. <laughs> We're going down to the discussion. <laughs> discussion. We're in. Down there. Oh, yeah. Here we e go. E1. Because <laughs> she couldn't fit any more papers this, in. Yeah. Until we do this again, it's going to take a two day meeting. Um, John? Nothing, Your Honor. Clark? Um, thank you to whoever for getting uh, West Valley Drive completed. That's really nice that that one can come off the list for that, that sewer dropping off. I got a couple things. First of all, when we get reports from these different um, um, departments. departments, thank you, departments there, um, if, if they're not, can we get them signed? Can we make sure that whoever's issuing those reports, they're signed? Or at least there's some identification as to who prepared those reports. Um, I've gotten quite a few, or I've gotten several in, and I, I'm left to assume who's prepared that report. Um, what report are you talking about? Well, like a uh, quarterly I mean, report or a quarterly or, department head report. And I mean, I'm, oh. I'm going to pick on one because I, I wanted to ask a couple questions about this department anyway, and that is mapping. Uh, you know, nobody signed it. Well, I'm assuming it was prepared by Conley, which is totally fine. I, I'm not trying to criticize the report at all. But I do have a question on mapping. What do we do with that information? When, when Jim is mapping all the underground and everything, is that available to Ron Kaiser? Is that available to Gail Sitzman on, on the spur of a moment? Yep. Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, they can, they get a call Saturday night at midnight that a main's mm -hmm. broke somewhere. They can go access to all that information, boom. They know where the shutoffs are at. And they know where, and then they know what's underneath that break. Correct. Okay. Uh, well, uh, if you're talking in real time, no, not yet. They will be able to um, as soon as Premier gets done with the uh, tele all the digital upgrades that we're in the middle of right now. Okay. Because yeah, existing maps too. Okay, but I mean, like, if there's a main break and Jim's on well, vacation I, for two weeks, we we have access to this information. Well, uh, yeah. Well. Um, if you got a couple of days, we could go through that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I mean, it's fairly complicated. Um, all the departments that he impacts get um, copies, either digital or hard copies, paper copies, uh, that they use, like Ron just said. Uh, and that goes for water, uh, wastewater. I think police draw 
get stuff, fire yeah, hydrant. Fire hydrant map of the whole city where every yeah. hydrant is located, hanging in both buildings now, Clark. So when the guys come in for a fire call, they can look at that map and know where their closest fire hydrant is going to be before we even roll it out. So we've had him doing some of that stuff for us. Okay, okay. But by real time, I mean if he drew something two minutes ago, can uh, Gail Sitzman uh, dial in and retrieve that? We're not quite there yet. Once we have, um, what is it, um, eight tetrabytes of memory, <laughs> it's an ungodly <laughs> amount of memory that we're adding. It's underneath tetrabytes. the fire station. Um, there will be a means to access that by remote, but all the departments have to get connected first. And all of us have to then have the right passcodes to get in and et cetera, et cetera. So they have the information, but it's not instantaneous. Okay. Well, my question is prompted by, you know, that, that one man department goes on vacation and, and throws us, and I'm not picking on Jim at all, but he throws a cell phone in the drawer and says, I don't want any calls this, you know, the next two weeks. And we get a water main break, and I didn't know you know, how that information that we're paying him, that we own, is distributed to the people that need it, you know. A wealth of that information is also uh, on uh, our computers here, and Jason is responsible to archive okay. a okay. bunch of the old plans. Okay. So I was in a meeting with John, and we wanted to know where the storm sewer system was in North Greenview. In a matter of 20 minutes, I think Jason pulled it down for us. Okay. Okay. So I was just curious. Did that answer your question? Yes, right. it does. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, not for me. Mm, nothing today. Rex? That's nothing. Thank nothing. you. Okay. Uh, Scott? I don't have anything. Bill? Uh, just each of you have a copy of our spring cleanups and recyclotronics and appliance drop off. Uh -huh. Again, these are three programs that we do every spring. They've all been very successful. Uh, the appliance and tire drop-off do take an appointment, so you'll need to call City Hall 548-4958 and set up an appointment if you intend to drop something off. But again, the dates are there, the times are there, the media has been very good about making uh, the information available. That's all I've got. Okay. 